What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Savatech once again, and to prep for the new APUs coming out from AMD, the Raven Ridge APUs, we're gonna have to go ahead and hop in and update the BIOS on the ASRock AB350 ITX motherboard. We're planning a few other things for this case mod, essentially, that we're gonna be doing primarily focused around the APU, and this is gonna be the first step in that build block, so if you wanna keep track of this, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. Stick around. Welcome back. So like I said, today we're going to be going through the update process for the BIOS on this ASRock AB350 motherboard. The kind of caveat here that's interesting is they actually require that you do a bridge BIOS before updating to the BIOS that actually supports that CPU. And they also have a memory support list that we're also going to take a look at because there's a couple things that I find curious there. So without further ado, let's, let's hop into it. Coming over here, here's the BIOS page and like I said it says we don't recommend users update their BIOS if their system is already running okay but obviously we aren't going to be running okay or at all without the latest flash. Here's where it gets interesting though before updating this BIOS please update the BIOS to P3.60 first which you can see is one of these there's the Windows and the instant flash we'll be doing the instant flash today because we do not have an OS installed on that motherboard the other caveat to this is you won't be able to update it at least this particular motherboard because it doesn't have the BIOS flashback feature without a previous generation AMD uh, AM4 platform so we're talking about first gen Ryzen so keep all of that in mind I will go over this memory real quick if we sort by memory supported it looks like the highest that we can get up to is going to be 3200 megahertz as you can see up here uh, from a data which I had a set of a data I don't currently anymore I need to see if I can get that worked out right now we're gonna be running crucial and we have some 2666 crucial memory and we're gonna be running 32 gigs of it. I'll show you guys that later on. Hopefully, even though it's not on this list as supported, it will still be supported because we have the two 16 gig sticks. All right, so without further ado, the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to target our USB drive and I'm just going to, you can see I've used it for moving benchmarks back and forth between systems along with flashing before. So we're just gonna go ahead and right click and format. All right, so now that the format is complete, I'm actually gonna download both ROMs here. We're going to get the 3.60 ROM. I'm just gonna click the global version and save that. And then we are also going to get the latest version, which actually supports Raven Ridge right here and save that as well. So now that we have both of these ready, I'm just going to copy them over to the USB drive, which we've named BIOS. And it is just a USB 2.0 drive, so I don't use it for any hefty file moves or anything like that. And I'm going to extract them here. This will be the 4.4, and then we'll extract this one as well. Okay, so before we can really get started flashing, we do have to set up a little test environment here. So we're gonna be doing that with the AB350 Fatality motherboard, of course. We're gonna be doing it with a Ryzen 1600. And then obviously the Ryzen 1600, the R5, does not have any built-in uh, GPU in it, so we are going to be using a Fury Nano here to get video output. And a note, quick note on that is this does not have DVI. So, you know, for troubleshooting purposes, it probably wouldn't be the first one that I'd want to go with. I did just grab a stick of a four gig stick of Savage or eight gig stick, sorry, of Savage DDR4. And I'll probably go ahead and install this now while we have the board out, but not really necessary at all. Okay, so all we're really gonna need here is gonna be the motherboard. And I don't think we actually need anything else out of here. Let me just verify. We should be good. I'm not gonna be connecting to any Wi-Fi or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is just close the motherboard box up and throw the motherboard on top of the box. So now that we have the motherboard on top of the box, we can start installing parts. Let's go ahead and get the CPU unboxed now at this point. Okay. 
Okay, so there's the CPU unboxed and we're gonna be using the AMD stock cooler for obvious reasons. There's no reason to put anything else on here right now. And it should just be the Wraith cooler, not the one with the RGB, I don't believe. Yeah, it's just the basic Wraith. Well, the, the basic upgraded Wraith. So there's that. And that should be all the parts that we need now. And you want to be careful with the CPU more than the socket on the AMD motherboards, if you guys are not aware of that. Because the CPU actually has the pins on it, as opposed to Intel having the pins on the socket itself. Then you want to just line up the arrow with the arrow on the motherboard. And don't force these in, because like I said, there's a whole bunch of pins on the bottom of it. And then once it's kind of set in, just make sure it's actually in there. If you force this arm down and the pins are not seated, you can snap some pins off and damage your CPU. It's a lot easier to damage these Ryzen CPUs than it is to damage the Intel CPUs. Which is kind of a, I think part of the reason why also Threadripper finally went LGA as well. So now at this point it does look like, interestingly enough, which I haven't used one of the new Wraith coolers, they do not have the clip on. So I'll actually have to unscrew the stock bracket here. Yeah, I've had a whole bunch of Ryzen processors and have yet to install a Wraith cooler. I've always done something custom. Okay, so now that the stock brackets are off, we're just gonna go ahead and pop this on. And it looks like we can just slide it right into the same back plate, which is good, and then tighten them down. Now, it's pretty standard on almost all mechanical parts that you tighten in a cross pattern. These are not numbered in which it prefers, so I'm just gonna use a random gut feeling cross pattern while tightening this down to make sure that I'm evenly applying pressure to the processor and not applying too much pressure to one side. So exactly what I was trying to prevent, I was going too fast and didn't prevent because I didn't actually get this one threaded the first time around. So now that's threaded up. Let me make sure this side's threaded up as well. These have a definite stop point. So as soon as it stops, I would just not even try to torque it down at all. And then we're good to go. Now we're just gonna plug the fan header in and then install the RAM. Currently I'm only using one stick of RAM. So we're gonna use the B slot. Shouldn't really matter in this configuration or on this particular motherboard because you're only gonna ever be in single or dual. And for gigs, I will go ahead. For the love of gigs, I will go ahead and install the M.2 drive, keeping in mind that earlier when I said I didn't need anything from the box, that will mean I will need the M.2 screw from the box. This is the Toshiba RD400. They have been one of the better budget NVMe drives for price to gig with including, if you take into account the speed and also availability because as much as all of us would like a Samsung 960, they are sold out a lot because Samsung sold out of everything a lot lately. These are usually still easy to find and I'll put a link to them in the description below as well as if you guys are interested I did RAID Zero three of these on Threadripper, and those are some pretty cool speeds there. So that's gonna be all of the parts we need other than the graphics card. So we'll plop the GPU in now. Right now, we're just gonna be using a little TR430, which I will be using for the final build as well, because we won't actually be running this AMD, this AMD GPU. Well, we will be running an AMD GPU, just an iGPU, it won't need this much power. So here, let me see if I can spin this around. So we have a single 24 pin, and then 
on the other side here, we have another eight pin. And so we're gonna plug the CPU eight pin in first actually, just to make things easy. If I can find it, there we go. Oh, we won't be able to use this power supply. I didn't even think about that. Well, we won't be able to use this GPU. So, <laughs> fatal flaw on my part, which actually is fine because I have another one. I wanted to use this because it's a really cool card, uh, but it does require an eight pin. And I apologize, you guys probably already knew that and were screaming at me in the comments. Um, this TR430 only has a single six pin. That's okay, because I have a little GT1050 over here. Like I said, I guess there's no reason, real reason to be special because we aren't even gonna be having a GPU in this system later, so. There we go, now we don't need any power for that and we can get to work on the rest of this. Okay, and then the 24 pin as well. Go ahead and pop, pop that in over here. And all of our power is up and ready. Alrighty, so we apparently stopped recording there so to catch you all up, we hooked up the mouse and keyboard and the flash drive with the BIOS ROMs that we placed on it from my main PC. All the power is hooked up and I'm just going to go ahead and hook up the power to the power supply itself and get the system booted up. Alrighty, so I'm just going to flip the switch on the power supply and then to start up the motherboard you want to find the front I.O. headers and trip the power button itself to get the system to start up. And there we go. The fans have started spinning up. The only thing I did forget to do is plug in the HDMI, but we can resolve that pretty quickly here. Alrighty, so I went ahead and turned off the lights so we got rid of that glare here because we are just capturing the screen. We did post, so that is awesome. Um, not restarting like I think I should. Control on delete's not working. So we're just gonna trip the reset switch. There we go. We should come back up and I'll just try to catch it. Well, the reason it's doing that is because it can't find a boot device. So we're gonna go delete and now we're in the main bio screen. And so what we wanna do here is check out that we are on P.2, or yeah, we want to check this out. The UFI version is P2.10. And so we're ready to go ahead and flash. So under tools, we can do instant flash or we can go straight to instant flash with the hot key on boot. And it does look like we can pick up, it's automatically picking up 3.60, which is the bridge. And that's what you want to confirm here that you're not trying to go straight to the four. So we know right now that, that, this, that this is P3.60, so I'm happy with that. We'll select that and update the BIOS. Alrighty, so programming success, and we can go ahead and reboot, and then go straight back into the BIOS. I guess I should just start calling it Eufy. It's not a BIOS anymore. Okay, so on the main page here, on the Eufy version, we're at P3.60, which is the bridge BIOS. So now we just wanna go back to tools and grab Instant Flash, and as you can see here, it found the 4.4, which is going to be the version to support Raven Ridge, and coming up here shortly in April, the Gen 2 of Ryzen. So let's go ahead and grab that, and this board should be ready to go. Now, in theory, this will work on all ASRock boards and will be a very similar process on other boards as well. So keep that in mind, and I hope this video is, has been helpful. We are going to finish this and then confirm that we are in 4.4 and then be good to go. Okay, so we're just gonna hit enter to reboot and confirm that we are on the correct firmware. And coming back up, you can see the Eufy version there is P4.40. And if we reference that with the 
ASRock website that is the current version to support Raven Ridge along with Ryzen 2. So we are good to go. Alrighty son, so that's gonna wrap up how to go ahead and use the Bridge BIOS to upgrade to the latest Eufy version for an ASRock AB350 motherboard. It should be similar on their X370s as well to get it to support the latest chips from AMD that are coming out here shortly. We have Raven Ridge 2400G coming in on Monday, so we'll plop it in, confirm it works. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're interested in this vlog. We also have a plethora of water cooling parts coming in. As you can see, we're gonna be putting it in this case. I've done some work in this case. We're gonna talk about it. I've ripped out a lot of components. We put the, started test fitting the reservoir, um, as well as just kind of drawing out a plan and we're gonna go over all those parts later. So I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next Tuesday.